But here's the question I wanna, wanna ask us. What does Jesus, writing this letter to Pergamum, what does it mean for us as believers and Christians in the 21st century? And I think in order to kind of dig out the meaning and the application of that, we have to ask ourselves the question, are you a threat to the throne of Satan? Are you a threat to the throne of Satan? Remember, he's saying to the one who conquers, to the one who's fighting, to the one who's waging war against the enemy and his demonic forces, are you fighting? I think, I think a greater question that, that a lot of us wrestle with, is it, is it even worth the fight? Is it even worth the fight? Like, is it worth it laying down my, my, my sexual desires, right? Is it worth me laying down my addiction? Is it worth me laying down my relationships? Is it worth me laying down my finances? Is it worth me laying down the life that I think I should live so that I can follow Christ in the way I know that he is called to follow? You see, you have to think about these believers in Pergamum. They were looking at the very people that could take their life and say, look, you might be able to take my life, but you cannot take the hope that I have in my King and my God, Jesus. You see, here's what I know. I know that for the church in Pergamum, in the middle of the fear, in the middle of the uncertainty, in the middle of the doubt, in the middle of them looking at the reality that their lives could be taken at any moment, that they were actually experiencing a supernatural sense of comfort and a supernatural sense of joy and contentment and happiness that only comes from a relationship that is alive and intimate with King Jesus. See, this is the relationship that he is inviting all of us to experience. And when you experience this, when you taste it, you realize that Jesus is the only thing that matters. He's the only thing in this world that truly matters. But to see the beauty of Christ, we have to see the weight of our sin. You see, here, here's, here's what we deserve. This was our reality, right? That because of our sin, that we would be separated from our creator, our God, our father for all time and endure suffering and pain in hell forever, except that is not our story. Because Jesus took on flesh and he came into our world and he surrendered his life on the cross to take the wrath of God on our behalf. And because he rose from the dead, he defeated sin, death, and the enemy. It means we have the hope of salvation. Like, I think we forget what this actually means. We have nothing left to fear in this world and everything to gain. You see, when you get that, you put down sin and you grab a sword and you charge the gates of hell and you're grabbing everybody around you to tell you, hey, there's a greater hope and there's a greater reality that is going on in our world all around us. Are we doing that? Are we conquering? It's why our mission at Crosspoint is to relentlessly pursue those far from God to help them know and follow Jesus. We will not wait. We have to conquer, we have to fight, and we have to wage war against the enemy. And I just wanna share this. I have seen the fruit of conquest take place right here in our own community. I am seeing people every single month surrendering their life to Christ. Some people who have been running from the Lord for years and years. We, as the church, witness dozens of people every single month publicly identify themselves with Jesus and say, look, I'm gonna follow him regardless of the cost. I'm seeing chains of addiction 
fall off of people who have been stuck like I was for decades and decades. I am seeing marriages that would have no other hope that everybody would say, oh, this was just gonna end in divorce. That's the only option, be restored, to be made whole. I am seeing prodigal sons and daughters come back home to their family and join in the battle against the war of Satan and his demonic forces. So for all of us, we have to continue to fight and where we are compromised, where there is sin, we simply recognize the fact that Jesus is better and we repent and we surrender our sin and say, God, I trust you with everything that I have. That is our call as believers. The stakes are high and we have to join the fight. So with that, let's close in prayer and ask for the Holy Spirit and his help. Dear God, uh, we're so thankful that you give us the hope of salvation. God, we can come in week in and week out and hear the gospel and almost become numb to our reality. God, that there is nothing in this world left to fear. There's no circumstance, there's no disease, there's no broken relationship. There is nothing that gets to take away the hope that we have in you, the joy that we have in our relationship with you, the peace, the contentment, the comfort, God, it's all of these things that I pray as a community of believers that we are experiencing as our reality and where sin has come in and distorted our view of the world, where our eyes have been taken off of you and your beauty and put onto the world. God, I pray that we would refocus, reorient our lives so that you are our only purpose. God, help us to hold fast to our faith. Help us to reflect the faithfulness of Pergamum right here in our own culture. God, we need your help. We ask for it today. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray, amen.